Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar about the Elected Simulator. My name is Tim van Skarlenberg, and I'm your presenter for today. I used to teach with Electrode in the Netherlands for, uh, yeah, for a couple of years. Um, I teach, I taught on the high schools and at the um, college uh, level, so I did trade schools as well. Then I came to the U.S., to the Montana area, where I set up courses and, uh, yeah, for automotive courses and, uh, and trainings. And now I work for Electrode uh, as the customer support specialist here and, and also the training specialist. If you have any questions questions when this webinar is over, you can always reach out to us at support usa at electo.com. All right, so what are the topics for today? We're going to show you where to find the engine simulator uh, modules and courses. I'm going to show you the difference between the levels of faults. I'm going to show you how to use the tools. I'm going to show you how it looks from the student uh, perspective and how he or she can uh, resolve the faults in the simulator. I'm going to show you how to grade afterwards the simulator. So there's an automatic uh, grading system in there, but you can also review it and uh, yeah, uh, change the grade afterwards. I'm going to show you how to uh, duplicate and create your own simulator fault. And I'm going to show you how to prepare your students for the simulator. All right, um, so you will see a GoToWebinar question box like here I have in my screen. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out anytime during the webinar so you can type your questions right here. Um, you can also ask me questions. I will unmute uh, the microphones for everybody. So if you have a question, you can just click here on the red microphone and when it turns green, we can hear you. All right. Let's move on here. Let's go to my uh, demo uh, web page. Uh, Elected works best in a uh, Google Chrome or a Mozilla Firefox browser. All right, so I have tim.elected.com. For you, it will be probably your school address. We're going to log in first as a teacher here. So where can you find the simulator faults? If you look here under the tab modules, you can find under default by subject, you can find the elected simulator folder here. So again, it's under the tab modules, and then you click on default folder here, and then under the elected simulator folder, we have our simulate, uh, simulator uh, modules. So you see here, we have three different kind of levels, basic, advanced, and specialist. Basic would be a really good one for high school students and to prepare your students for, um, yeah, for college degrees, uh, for a little bit higher level of uh, um, diagnostic. And the cool thing about the basic ones, they are like, basically we have a, yeah, a lot of uh, faults here, as you can see but they are like more descriptive. So there's more into the work order with those faults. So for example, this injector one defective resistance to high, if I click on there, you see here the work order and shows check engine line comes on, check the resistance of injector one and look for the correct value in the vehicle specifications. So it's like, way more in de uh, detail and it gives away quite a bit already so it's more like the students have to follow the steps this is for the basic level of our simulators so if i go to the advanced one here and let's look up the injector one you see there's a little less of a description here you see also, oh, your colleague is using the multimeter, multimeter, so you don't have a multimeter to change this, uh, to chase this fault. So uh, you have to do a little bit more. Also, the available tools are different here now, so you don't have to multimeter. And then the specialist one. It just says check engine light, consult, runs partly, diagnose and repair as needed with the use of the scan tool. So they have to use the scan tool and they don't have the voltmeter here or multimeter. 
All right. Um, so you see here we have three levels, and basically they are the same faults, but they are harder to uh, resolve. You see down below, and this is the teacher view, your students won't see this. Also, your students won't see this title here. Um, you want to be careful if you show something in your in your class and you and you start it up the simulator so you want to uh, go step by step through the fault with your students that you don't show this screen here in the beginning because this gives away already everything what the fault is about so basically you want to start up the module and then uh, you, you see here when you start up the module it is also up here the fault so basically you want to start up the module in a student mode we always recommend an elective actually to have yourself as a student in um, elective so you can actually uh, yeah know from the student's perspective uh, the best way how to help them uh, so this is not visible in the student's perspective the fault the work order is visible all right and again uh, when you scroll down here in the teacher mode, you see where the fault is. Um, I will go one layer back here by using our breadcrumbs. For example, the down below, the wire defective. It will also say where the wire is defective. So that's pretty cool. It's really easy for you as a teacher to figure out where the fault is before you assign it to the students. All right. Any questions so far? Doesn't look like we have any questions. All right, so um, let's click your back on the elected simulator folder here. It's good because we have something really helpful here. And uh, it's called the elected simulator engine management. So this one here has no faults in it. And the nice thing is you can uh, practice with this um, simulator here without having any scores or um, yeah, if you make a mistake, it doesn't show up uh, for the students, for example. So it's a really nice one to practice with. So let's click here on the simulator. Say start module. And you see, uh, we have a full screen here with the engine simulator. So you can zoom in here at the engine. Here at your left side, you have a work order. In this case, it's not like showing anything. It's just describing something here about the engine simulator. You see the VIN code here on the top. You see the date. And you can also print the work order if you want to. Um, and a student can fill out at the diagnosis they did here. So when the student is done, he has to check here before he can return a vehicle to the customer. So that's an important one as well. Again, this is the practice uh, simulator module. So um, this only shows you a little bit how it works. And from the student perspective, it lo looks different. You can make the work order smaller by closing it. So you see your live vehicle. Um, what you can start and what you can uh, try out as well. You have here on the right top, there's a slider bar where you can zoom in and zoom out. You can also zoom in and zoom out with, uh, yeah, your mouse with the scroller or your mouse. So that's really helpful. Um, here on the back side, we have also a fuel pump you can test. And when you scroll in here, and you hover over the connector. So this is not a connector. This here is an electrical connector. You see it highlights blue. So when I click here on the connector, it basically uh, it disconnects the connector. So you see here when I click on here. So if you want to change an engine part in the simulator, you basically want to uh, disconnect it first. And then what you can do is drag the engine part. So you click on it. See, so you hover over it. It's starting to get blue. Then you click on it. And then you can drag your parts here in the part box down below. And if you wish to uh, change this part, you see here's the parts box when you go down. 
If you wish to change this part, you can click on it and you can say replace this part. What you want to do then is drag the part back over and connect it and it should work again. So that's pretty neat. Um, and you can do this also with ignition coils. You can do this even with the ECU. Um, so that's a really neat feature and it's uh, not that hard to do. So again, um, let's zoom in here at the engine. You have this connector here, disconnect connector, and I can click here on the coil and drag it over to the parts box, click on the part, say replace this part, and we have a nice beautiful part and I can connect it again. You see, this is a four-cylinder engine. Uh, it's like a, it has the coils on top of the um, spark plugs here. So you can also change the spark plug. So you can also uh, store your uh, part in the toolbox, sorry, in the parts box. If you only want to change the spark plug, this is also possible. If you're not sure which coil is defective, for example, you can also change the coils. So you don't have to uh, replace them all. You can also just drag them over and change the coil uh, from cylinder one to four. In our case, uh, this is cylinder one. That's on the right side when you sit in the car. Um, and then this is cylinder four. Same thing for the injectors here. You can also change the injectors. Then we have a battery, which you can connect and disconnect. We have the fuse box here. You can also replace those fuses if you would like to. We have the relays. Um, we're lucky here. We have only three in this vehicle. I know the newer ones have way more. And then we have uh, this goes to the inside of the car, to the throttle body. Uh, sorry, the throttle body is here. But it goes to the throttle or accelerator pedal here on the inside of the car and we have way more sensors and you see here also the ecu you can connect and disconnect so there's a lot of features here all right um the next thing i want to show you is like here on the left side of our screen we have basically our toolbox so here on the bottom was our parts box here on the left side is our toolbox. And you see I have quite a few tools. What I normally uh, like to work with is with a full screen here. You see like it makes it full. Um, and, well, no surprise there, right? But the benefit of that is like that we can actually, um, yeah, you have more place to put your tools. And I will show you in a sec how that looks like. So in our toolbox, the first thing we want to look at is our instrument panel here on the top. This is basically where you can start the car. Um, I don't have my uh, noise on here. Hmm. One sec here. There we go. Uh, you might, um, yeah, you probably will hear my the noise of the engine simulator here. Um, so you can start it here. There's an accelerator pedal here. There's here also a temperature gauge. If you turn off uh, the engine and you zoom in, for example, you put it on the second one, you hear the whole whole time an annoying beep from the from some of the coils here and I like often to mute the side when I don't have to listen to it but at least you know you can mute the side here on the top just do it with your right mouse click and you can unmute it and mute it there's also a check engine light what comes on or oil pressure gauge and uh, uh, yeah and the alternator check uh, light here When you do, uh, when you connect the diagnostic tool, uh, the diagnostic test tester, you want to always have uh, to switch the engine on the second position, like a real, like a real life, uh, yeah, situation. 
All right, then we have the multimeter here. Uh, this is a multimeter we also teach with within Electrode. Um, so unfortunately, we cannot uh, measure any amps and we don't have an amp clamp neither. Um, the development team is aware of this and um, yeah, they, I don't know, they're already working on it, but uh, they are uh, aware of it. So we can connect here the voltmeter really easy, measure the voltage of the battery, or you can measure the resistance here from this injector. So you see that we have pretty cool flexible leads here. So they go wherever I scroll my screen to. If I click on those leads, they will loosen. And then you basically just drag the leads here to the injector connector. And you can figure out uh, what the resistance is. So you can check the resistance of the injectors. Other cool feature is you can also back probe things. to test them and because I have the engine off, it's a, uh, it's a uh, more realistic measurement, um, but you can back probe it as well. That can save you some time uh, for voltage measurements. That's really helpful. So uh, yeah, for the rest, you cannot, uh, you can switch it to uh, from AC to DC, uh, sorry, from DC to AC. And then, you see here the voltage, the amp doesn't work, so you cannot switch it to amps here on the meter. So you can only use a voltage and uh, ohms, like the resistance. All right, then we have an oscilloscope. We have also separate uh, lessons on the oscilloscope. I think they're really cool, uh, honestly. So oscilloscope, you can connect and then get a live data here in the system. You want to connect this with one with the ground that leads. So I normally pull it over to here. If you want to get rid of a tool, you see it's getting pretty busy at my screen. Um, you can go here to the toolbox and just click at a tool to make more space. It's a two channel scope, so you could use two channels if you want to. You can back probe. Let's let the engine run here. And you see you, you get a nice scope image out of this. Um, the really cool thing is, and I will come back to that later, uh, you can check this scope image here uh, with the scope image under uh, the diagnostic tester. All right, um, any questions so far? I know it's a lot of information. I will point out a little bit more where you can find more information about this. So um, yeah, when you're working with it, um, you actually know where you can find uh, more help. So let's go here to the diagnostic tester. So I first want to turn it to the second setting here, identify the vehicle. You see here all fault, all fault codes. We have no diagnostic trouble codes. So let's create one here, for example. You see here the check engine light comes up. Go back. You see here we have a fault code in our system. I'll turn off the noise here really quick. Uh, you see here is in memory and this is active. 
And the really cool thing is what you can do here is you can click on the fault and it brings you basically, um, yeah, where it started to record the fault. You see the time, um, you see here what the value was of all the indicators. You can make the screen bigger here if you would like to on the right bottom and you can go through the live data here. All right, then, um, so that's about the all fault codes. Then you can go into the system here and click here on engine management. You see like we blacked out the transmission, airbags, ESC and audio. Unfortunately, we didn't like uh, uh, develop the engine simulator that advanced yet, but um, so far it's all on the engine management. You can find live data under here. So you can select the live data you would like to. And it will record it for you. You could use here your display. Accelerator, so you see like it almost up and down with the uh, engine RPM. And the coolant temperature goes steady up. Then this one here, the information part. So again, I'm in the engine management simulator. We just talked about in, identify vehicle, all fault codes. Now I'm here in systems. And when you go to engine management, um, I just showed you the live data. If we go here to information, there's a block diagram in here, so it uh, shows you how they communicate, the ECU and the TVCM. See also like the canvas structure and the gateway. And then you have the wiring diagram. This wire diagram is super helpful. Um, for example, you see here a wire diagram. Um, we didn't coat the wires here as a normal vehicle, a normal vehicle you're used like, okay, black will be ground or white or brown will be ground. And it's really similar all um, because we want to um, help the student to read the diagram well and know what is what and not only think in colors, we choose like not to have the uh, colors in specific form, like black can be uh, the ground, but you see here, for example, black is also the, the feet wire on top. So this is an interactive uh, diagram. So let's click here on this one. And you see this is an injector one. And you see the supply voltage should be 11 to 14 and a half volts. The resistoring resistor is 16 uh, ohms. We just measured that. You see the location of it. And here you have the scope image. Remember when we are uh, looking at uh, the scope image I just showed you, that was a similar one So it. Uh, I assume it's the right one we just did. Um, I see here also uh, you want to measure it rel relative to ground on pin two. And this is really interesting to check the scope images here. So what is pin two on here? You have to go one page back. You see here pin two. And um, from this injector, and it's a light blue wire. So the red one is the feet, and then the light blue one is connected with the ECU. So if I make this one smaller again, my diagnostic tool, you see here I connected with the light blue one. Also how to set up your scope is really helpful here. So I click here on the injector one. You see the scope image here should be five, volts for a division. I had 10 volts, so I can adjust that if you would like to. And one millisecond, so I can also do that. There we go. All right, so this is just a good indication for your students uh, on how to work with this. All right, just so you see the whole legend under here. So if you click on, for example, the camshaft position sensor, we'll show you where it is at. 
and the scope image. So again, you can find it here under the diagnostic tester. You go to systems, engine management, information, and then wiring diagram. Okay, um, the live data we already talked about. So we have also something to test the actuators. You can do that at the throttle body or you can do it uh, on the ECU. And this is also really cool. Um, let's unmute. So if you unmute it, you can actually hear it when you turn the fan on, for example, um, or you turn uh, the main relay. So you can all do that here in the actuator test. And here you can do the throttle position. You see, because the pedal doesn't go up, it, it throws a code probably. Uh, so it's not, it doesn't come from the pedal. You see that we have not, uh, now it shut off the engine. Let's connect it again because, because it has some fault codes in the engine. Um, we cannot always, uh, yeah, um, do the actuator test. So let's erase the fault codes here. Go back to the actuator test. You see, we can control now fan relay, bump relay, and the main relay. All right, so we can also program an ECU if we want to. If the student has to replace the ECU in here, um, he has to program it, otherwise the car doesn't work. Uh, but we have now the latest version here. Um, say, so the same for the TVCM and the configuration will be also for the TVCM. So let's say um, you change something in there, um, you have to relearn uh, re the uh, throttle bottle control module. All right, so the control units is the same thing you see here, the, how it's all controlled. You can go deeper in there. You basically come back here um, for the actuator test, etc. All right. Let's go to the next one. That is the breakout box. Let's store this tool again. So the breakout box you can put that here in between the ECU and the main. A wiring harness. So let's click here on the breakout box. So when I zoom out, you see here on the top is the breakout box. You want to turn the engine off, take off the main wiring harness, connect it with the breakout box. You basically can uh, measure all those points here, the pins. And that's also a really helpful feature to uh, see if there's any issues between the, uh, the feed and the ECU or between the sensors and the ECU. Then we have a fuel pressure gauge. Uh, it's, uh, when you click on there, it's already automatically uh, connected. Be helpful for uh, yeah fuel pressure measure and to see how the fuel pump works. Then we have a jump starter. If you leave the engine on for too long uh, in the uh, here in the simulator, the voltage will go down slowly. So sometimes you need the booster again. It's already automatically connected. When you click here on this tool. The next one is the wiring diagram. Um, so we have a wiring diagram under the um, diagnostic 
uh, tester and we have also one here on the left side of your screen. And this wire diagram will basically help you um, if you have to um, uh, replace a wire, you want to do it in here. So let's say if you click here on the wire and you see the speech bubble shows up here, you want to click on that wire and it will be replaced. So if you measure with the uh, fault meter, you do like in a fault finding, and you uh, uh, found that there is, uh, for example, a ground wire is uh, defective of the fuel pump here. You can click here on the uh, ground wire and you can replace this wire and this will be replaced uh, in the engine. I wish it always went that easy, right? Uh, that you can uh, replace a wire that easy, but yeah, so that's how that works in the, in the simulator. All right, then we have the work order. I already showed you that in the beginning, so this is the way how you can get it back here. And then we have the invoice. The invoice shows you basically uh, how much is spent on everything. So you see an OBD scan, it's 30 bucks, uh, wire and uh, terminal co connector. So we uh, replaced two wires, it's 16 bucks here. And if I change a part here, for example, Get rid here of the wiring diagram. You see here under the invoice, we ignition coil we changed, it was 146. And then you have the troubleshooting time and additional labor time. This is really helpful. <laughs> to compare with, uh, with your students. So let's say a student goes through here and he changes the ECU. Uh, that's a pretty costly, uh, yeah, repair. Um, and another student can fix it by only uh, repairing a wire to the ECU. Um, so this all will show up in the invoice. So for example, if you replace the ECU, and you connect it here, and look at the invoice, it goes pretty steep up to $1,754 here. And uh, so you can see, uh, yeah, was it really necessary or not? So this will uh, basically simulate a real life scenario. For every minute the student spends here on the simulator, uh, the labor time will be uh, $1 a minute. So this will add up here, the amount. So I'm already uh, boring you here for 20 minutes, you see. <laughs> All right. Then there's a tutorial and I will go like step by step really quick through the whole process here. So you could also look back uh, here, how things work. You can go here to the help button for more about it. So this basically the manual in this simulator. And if you want to log out out of the simulator, you can use here the go back button here on the right top. Student always has to, um, if he's done with uh, repairing, he has to go to the work order here, fill out the diagnosis and work performed, check the boxes in under the checklist, then return vehicle to customer, and in my case, it says there was no failure, but there are other issues. Not all the tools are uh, stored. So we have basically have to store the tools before you can go ahead. Just by clicking on the tools. And then it should be good. All right, I know it was a lot of information here. Any questions so far? can unmute the microphones here. Any questions? All right, then let's continue. So um, anytime you can ask me questions here. So if there is, uh, you can also create your own simulator fault here. You can do that by, um, Clicking on the elected simulator here, and you can do it here in the modules. Use the plus, 
you have to select the type so in our case this is simulation give it a title um, Now you can look up under here, you want engine management. So that's the only feature you have. You can describe it, put a level here if you would like to say add and automatically this screen starts up. You can type out here your work order. The first thing you want to choose is the fault you want. So here you can uh, choose your fault so you can choose like a preset fault in our system. So um, let's see. New work order. All right, you can, um, yeah, you can even leave some tools out. Let's say you're a teacher in a high school. Uh, you might not want the oscilloscope to start with. Um, it's all up to you. So you can choose here your tools. You can even say, do you want to evaluate it? Yes or no. So this automatic evaluation, now you say, okay. And this is how we created our own lesson module. You see here is the fault. When I go back here to the simulator, I put it just under here. And I should learn how to spell management, right? <laughs> you can always change that here. All right. Um, Let's continue now to uh, by going to the student account and see how you can actually solve a fault from the student perspective. I'm gonna log out out of the teacher account, log in into the student account here. So I think I put it under the Demo group one. Yeah, it's the right one here. So the student doesn't see what the fault is. He only sees uh, elected simulator. And under here is a little bit of this description. Start module. You see again, engine stopped while driving. I will not restart, diagnose and repair as needed. So normally the student tries to um uh, the three c's right it's a concern and uh, what is the customer complaint in the work order so that's this then he's going to see uh research the possible faults gather information so he will go here to the left side of his screen uh, instrument panel we'll unmute the site so i can hear it or it starts in a So I didn't want to start the first time, so something is definitely going on here. Let's put it on the second uh, position, the key. Let's go into the diagnostic tester. First, identify the vehicle. All fault codes. You see it has quite a bit of fault codes in there here. So all misfires, uh, the, the mass airflow circuit is not right, and the trolley position. So he could go further in by clicking on it, checking what's all under here. You can also test the systems one by one. For example, uh, what is the voltage on there? Fuel pump here. Uh, 
That looks good to me. Do we have any fuel pressure? Looks a little bit low to be around 200. So this is the way our I, I, uh, student can like, um, yeah, diagnose a whole fault. I won't go too much in detail because this can take often an hour for a student. Um, so when he's done, he should uh, click here, everything, fill the diagnosis out and return the vehicle to customer. If he thinks he's done, he can click on here. Of course, I already knew that a, a pump was uh, defective. And you see here, automatically this uh, is created here. And when I go back now in the teacher account, this was the student account. Let's go back here to the teacher account. And I go here to the students group, to the module I assigned. I can actually see the whole log file here under here to so see what he did, uh, what kind of tools he used. So diagnostic, uh, diagnostic tester, multimeter, fuel pressure, uh, pressure gauge, etc. And you can also change here his score or her score by clicking here on the pencil. You can change it here as well. Let's say he needed a lot of help uh, during this uh, diagnostic uh, procedure. You can always uh, change the score here. All right, um, how do you prepare your students for the simulator? Uh, it's always a question we get, where can you find courses for this? Um, I would highly recommend here under the course tab to, um, we have under automotive essentials, if you're using that, we have really good electrical courses. So electronics is a good one. Um, the gasoline, uh, gasoline systems here, actuators and sensors would be really good. Canvas systems. And then um, there's also a little bit of the oscilloscope here. Um, lessons on that, you can also search them here under the search bar. So that's really helpful. Um, I will make an overview and, and email it to you uh, after this webinar where you can find those courses. So I will give an overview of the courses on how to prepare your students. Um, then you can also look under the, if you use ASD and MEST, the same thing here. The electrical part and the engine performance. So under engine performance, we have a lot. Um, so we have the oscilloscope introduction here. We have, um, the signals and sensors theory, the control theory. So this is all really helpful stuff to uh, prepare for the engine management simulator. All right, uh, any questions? Doesn't look like it. If you have any questions, you can always use our support system here as well. You click here on support tickets and you can create a ticket uh, with your questions. You can also email me. Um, well, it's actually our support department. So it's support hyphen USA at electo.com. And I'm more than, uh, yeah, we're more than happy to help you with the simulator. All right, thank you so much for, uh, for being here with us today uh, with the webinar. And I know it's not always easy after a day of teaching to go through a webinar like this. So thank you so much. And we hope to see you again uh, with our other webinars. All right. Have a good evening. Bye.